Welcome back, I'm Ryan from Blue Order Gaming, and as you can see from the title and from the screen right now, this is a video all about the Mound Maker's Covenant in Dark Souls 3. Now, to become a Mound Maker, you have to go to the Undead Settlement uh, after the second bonfire and bef after, after the second bonfire and before the third there is an enemy up on a hill overlooking the church in the area you'll have to get into a cage on his back i cannot show the exact location right now as i'm recording this live but he will take you down to the pit of hollows where you get the mound makers item now what are mound makers mound makers are essentially wild cards although i believe that they are wild cards with a flaw you can uh when you are summoned as a mound maker, you can summon into the world of an enemy in or a an opposing host in one of two ways. You can either go through it with a red summon sign, or you can go through it with a uh, well, a red, uh, a cracked red eye orb. That is it, uh, or a red summon sign or a white summon sign. If you go in as a red summon sign or a cracked red eye orb or a regular red eye orb. The enemies in the world will not attack you and you will fill up an enemy slot in the servers for the way that the uh, matchmaking works. If you summon in as a white soap sign to summon into a world, you are closer to the true wild card, but you're not all the way there in the wild card due to a flaw in the way that um, mound makers, the mound makers win in pvp so to make them a true wild card they should have made it so that you can either kill the host to win or help help the host kill the boss of the area to win that would make you a true wild card so that you would uh so that you would be able to pretty much blend in and the host wouldn't know if you are going to help him or hurt him uh, as the Covenant is set up now, you only get to win and get the Covenant item if you kill the host, which is why uh, some people, or most people actually, just see this as a way to trick new players into help, into summoning someone into their world that wouldn't, that they wouldn't normally summon in, and a, pretty much an earlier red soap sign for everybody else although this is not intended to be a dual covenant uh this pretty much just has you put has you uh make duels with other people now let's go down to the pit of hollows just to show you as i have gotten enough of the covenant item which is called a vertebra shackles to level up all the way in the covenant now it requires 30 to uh, 30 of these vertebrae shackles which I will pull up right here uh, to uh, to get these as I said before you kill a host or have a host die just to being in Dark Souls um, and you need 30 to level up all the way I got 29 in about five hours although I was level 25 at the time being summoned in on the high wall and it was essentially just noobs and it didn't take long but i have 44 now and we're going to go offer them to um to the sacrificial altar and we will give the first 10 this should be the first reward the bloodlust And then we will give 10 more. And then 10 more. And this should be enough to get the last item. There we go, warmth. Now just to show you that there's not another item, I will give the remaining 14 that I have. And all it is is 
giving deeper allegiance. Now let's leave the sacrificial altar, and I will show you the bloodlust, which is located right here. Cries 24 dex, 11 strength, has a C scaling index and an E scaling in strength. 24 bleed, 34 bleed, sorry, is its additional uh, effect. Here's what it looks like. Really sharp razors on one side, and it looks like fur on the handle. And to show you its uh, moveset, light attack, heavy attack. <coughs> uh, sorry. Two-handed light attack. Two-handed heavy attack. And then, I believe, weapon art. Uh, gives the ex gives the damer uh, gives the sword extra bleed damage. I believe is uh, the way that it goes. I do not know the uh, the actual effects of it. Uh, there you go. Bloodlust uh, stain blade with one's own blood to temporary grant uncanny sharpness for ones driven by bloodlust. Nothing deserve to remain standing so that's what it does the animation is quite cool on it and it uses barely any uh, uses barely any uh, FP points so um, very good weapon for those of you that are wanting a katana and as I said before it's quite simple to get although one little complication if you fight the boss of the Undead Settlement, the uh, tree, the big tree boss, you will not be able to easily come down here, and it requires you to defeat three of the four game's main bosses. So, you want to get down here quickly as possible. But, that is it for uh, the other items, actually. Warmth, I don't have the uh, ability to show it off right now, but... If you've seen the other games, it is the same pyromancy as before. So, that's it for this video. Remember, I'm Ryan from Bloody Gaming, and as always, I'll see you guys in the next one.